Hey guys, Jammer Saint here. Welcome back again to No Man's Sky. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of different stuff today. Uh, we're going to start with an update, then we're going to move on to doing uh, quick, easy money for... You could be a beginner, you could be a long-time player, you could be virtually anything you want to be, and there's a ton of stuff. So, a uh, ton of ways to do this. There's a lot of people that do trade routes, a lot of people do other ways to do this as far as getting money goes. You can do planet resources, you can do all kinds of stuff. So... To begin with the update, so first off, uh, I have progressed exponentially since my last video. Um, we have, uh, there's a ton of new stuff going on. So we've been following a lot of the storyline, but we've also just been kind of playing around doing just money making and also doing uh, Atlas stuff. We've gone to the different Atlas stations uh, numerous, numerous times. But first off, um, we, had, we got our freighter. So there's an easy way to get a freighter. It's uh, basically your free freighter for the game. And hang on just a second, I'm going to open this. Not sponsored by Red Bull. So, um, and a lot of, you can find a lot of videos on this. Basically, when you, first, when you first start warping, at any point from that point forward, when you warp, you have the opportunity. Uh, as soon as you come out of warp, you'll come directly into a fleet. And this fleet will be under attack if you are able to subdue the attackers, which is not that hard. It's normally three to six ships, and they're normally pretty low-level fighters. Um, but uh, as soon as you, if you can defeat them all, then you will get a message through your communicator from the captain. He'll ask you to come aboard. You go aboard the, the freighter, and then he will actually just give you the freighter. Now, this only works for your first time, so it's recommended if you're going to do it that you only do it in a, uh, a very wealthy system, and you do it with a... Uh, try to get an S-Class freighter. If you can't get an S-Class freighter, I mean, the, the one that I'm in now is a C-Class. The very first one I did, I got a C-Class, and I really never tried to do it a second time. And once you have saved after you do it, you you don't get the chance to go back and do it again. But um, as long as you've never gotten the actual ship and taken possession of the ship, then you can continue the same next time you warp. I, I've gone through the same fight scenario multiple times because once you have a freighter... They will give you the option to swap your ship the same way you can do the multi-tool and you can pay some money into it um, to upgrade or you could just do a straight swap if it's equal value. But with freighters, they're, there's, they can go from 14 million to 150 plus million expensive S-Class freighters. And so, uh, but if you already have a freighter, you don't want the freighter that they're showing you, you know, you might be looking at a, you know, uh, a C-Class freighter and you're just like, this is worse than what I have. Then you could just say no pay me instead and they'll give you a bunch of chromatic metal which is what you get from um refining copper so but this is my freighter it is a c-class freighter and i'll show you guys what the outsides of it looks like but uh this is the main bridge that's going to be in your freighter uh this is where you you contact this person to undergo um frigate missions to where you can send your frigates out they bring back all kinds of money resources all kinds of stuff you can sell uh, this is the station here in the center right here, which is where you can actually upgrade your, your upgrade control. You can buy upgrades. Uh, this is your freighter warp map. You can actually just warp your freighter with everything in it. This is uh, where you manage your fleet from. So this is the captain of your freighter. This is Commander Linux. Uh, I, I think he's Scottish. I think. I hope that's not offensive. I think he's Scottish. So... Uh, pretty much once you have your freighter, this is, uh, I'm going to do another video where I do a build out in here, but this is pretty much, uh, this is, you get a ton of space. You can build another floor onto this, but you can customize this out. And I just opened this up today because I'm going to customize it out. The only reason I haven't got this one room gone over here is because I still have a frigate mission going right now. So I want to let this finish before I turn this into, uh, before I get rid of it. And I have my six command centers up here which the command centers is what you're going to use to manage all of your frigate missions once you go to your navigations officer and you start the mission this is where you'll come back and you'll do all of your tracking and if they have a problem you can recall the fleet and then you can fix it when it gets back so uh this is a mobile save point this is a portable save point this is a um transporter and this is a large refinery uh large refineries are good because later in the game you'll need to take more than one item and put them together to be able to create another specific item. Actually, you know that I'm standing here, I think I just realized that when I went to warp last time, I went through a black hole. Yep, that's right. And I had something damaged. So before I take off, I wanted to fix this. 
excellent so uh all these uh i kind of customized the lighting here myself but uh, just made it easier uh all of these rooms back here are my storage one thing that i found out that was super cool that i've never seen in a video nobody ever told me about it was on my first planet i built um and actually i'll show you what i built i built uh storage see these are see these storage are rooms but when I was on my first planet, you can see the square box. It's this massive, like 10 foot by 10 foot by 10 foot cube. That is your storage. And I built that on the planet that I was at inside the house that I built first, um, which we might we might get to go back to and take a look at today, but I'm not sure. But so that's what I built there. Well, then when I got here, I built rooms and these rooms are actually storage container rooms. And inside these rooms, it's kind of really neat. So you see that they're numbered. Like this, you know, you have number four, three, two, one, zero, and then nine, eight, seven. So you can have up to 10 of them. Well, the cool part is, is I built the first four on the planet and put a bunch of stuff in them. But then when I came up here and I built, you know, the first four, the same ones, it was the exact same box. I could access all of those stored materials from my freighter anywhere at any time. So that is an absolutely cool thing is you don't, you don't lose any resources and you don't have to go all the way back to the planet to get those resources so that is nice let me fix a quick color there we go uh but that's that's something that's really nice uh, i color coded the lighting just because it's so much simpler for me to okay that was definitely a mistake oh well we're just gonna reload we're just gonna reload this so i cannot have to rebuild that because i do not know specifically which one it was so we're gonna go ahead and rebuild that so don't do what I just did and delete an entire room. That is a bad choice. Uh, always. I believe that the storage room was empty, but the cool part is, is I can just go back to it now. I'm still going to change the color, but do not delete the room. That is a bad choice all the way around. Rookie, rookie mistake. Okay, so now that we have, uh, I've showed you kind of what my build out is in here. Uh, a couple of things to consider is um, you can have in your possession at any time up to six uh, starships. Um, you can have a multitude of freighters, but you can only have six starships that you can own at the same time. If you get to six and you find another one, you're like, man, I really, really want that one. Then you are going to have to sacrifice one that you currently have. Either you're going to have to swap it or you're gonna to have to scrap the one that you have currently and then you can go back and take possession of that one. Um, and you need to be careful because when, say for instance, I have this one, um, this is not what my first choice to go would be. Actually, my first choice would be one of the haulers over there. So I don't wanna take a chance and accidentally swap it for this one. I would, I would wanna come back to my freighter. But here's the cool part. Once you have a freighter, uh, this is where all your ships go. So say you're on a planet and you have two ships right now And I'm in this ship right here and I go down to the planet and I find a scrap ship And I'm like, yeah, I really want that even if I just want to scrap it I'm gonna take the ship and I'm gonna claim it. I'm not gonna swap I'm just gonna claim it and then I'm gonna fly back to my freighter But your question is how do I get my other ship back to my freighter? No worries when you get to your freighter, park your ship, get out of your ship, it automatically will autosave, then reload the same autosave, and your other ship will now be right there with you. So you can actually go back to that ship, jump in here, and it will make it your priority ship again. So that is an update on my freighter. Now this is actually one thing that I really like. Um, my freighter is massive. Uh, it's just a Class C, but it has 26 uh, storage slots in it. Uh, and you can kind of see it is huge, even by freighter standards. It is absolutely enormous. Um, I have about 12,000 nanites, and it's uh, if I want to customize the colors on it, uh, it's 5,000 nanites per color. So this is something that I will do eventually. It is not something I'm going to do today. And to be honest with you, the, the offset gray, the lighter color, it makes it look a little bit more sinister. So I think I'm going to keep that. These are all of my frigates that you can see here. I have, um, you know, I'm not sure. I think I have nine. Um, also, once you uh, once you have uh, your freighter and everything, you can actually go over to these other fleets that are in the system, and you can take a look. A lot of times when you get closer to these, a lot of times when you get closer to these, you'll see that they'll have a small icon comes up that says, 
Uh, yeah, there you go. So there's the green icon right there. That green icon is a recruitable frigate. You can actually go in and you can inspect the frigate and decide whether or not you want to buy it. You you know you may be in the mood for in the need for a combat vessel and you don't have one. So you get close to it. There you go. So you're going to hit X. You're going to go to your starship communicator. He's going to say, hey, we got a ship for you, man. Inspect the frigate. So it's only a $2 million frigate, but this is a support, a support specialist. Uh, it's really, it's pretty decent stats, 3, 3, 6, and 6. It's a class C. Um, I am going to take it, actually, because I could use another support. Um, the more support ships you have, the less likely you are to end up having one of your ships damaged or lost while you're out on maneuvers. So you can kind of see the size of this. Uh, let me show you the size of this freighter. You can see the size of these freighters. They're decent size, but not so much. I mean, this is the freighter right here. This is, I mean, if I get in close to it, you can see it's not much bigger than what it looked like already. So that is a fairly small freighter compared to mine. Um, if you're out and about, well, that was, uh, I thought that was gonna explode. So if you're out and about and uh, you get one of these messages, you can, you can, the three stars is basically uh, somebody that has a bounty. It's these people are mostly harmless. So you can, uh, you, if you want to make a quick hundred thousand, you just you can go after them. But just the comparison, take a look at that freighter right there. That thing is massive. When it comes in, it is just absolutely massive. When you when you call it into a system. Up. So I got, I got the hundred thousand credits. I also got the uh, some chromium magnate, which is nice. So never, never not in need for that stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right now. I wanted to show you guys a, an easy way to make money, and this is for beginners and everything. The only thing I can state is, you would do better in this. Uh, I think my controls are a little wobbly, but um, one of the things I wanted to show you was I wanted to show you that you anyone can do this. And I'm going to do this, and I'll show you um, what I don't have going right now. And I'm going to show you that you can do this with just the most basic. As long as you have a significant amount of sodium, which you can get at mostly any space station, then you really um, you have the capability of doing this. You can be fresh out. You got your first starship. Um, and I'm going to teach you some of the things that I, was, that, I, that I learned along the way, and then I'm going to teach you a way to make some quick money. Quick money is nice because that's how you're going to upgrade your ships. That's how you're going to do a lot of things as far as getting getting actual upgrades for your ships and then also swapping your ship for another one where you have to put a significant amount of money into it. So, uh, One thing you can do, every time you come into a new system, go to the space station. Go to the space station and come right over here to this vendor. This is an exosuit vendor right here. And you can come to this exosuit upgrade module list. And this is how you increase your storage. So you can see my general here is full already. Technology's full. And this is my cargo. And your cargo, you can keep going. Um, every time you do a new square, it's going to be more expensive. So don't be surprised. That was 850,000 credits. Right now I have 55 million credits. So that is not a problem. Also, you can see here I have 12,800 nanites, 750 quicksilver. So some of the things that we're going to go through, uh, what I wanted to see specifically, uh, I'm going to go over to the teleporter and from the teleporter, that build back up from the teleporter, we can go, uh, all over the place. Um, so this teleporter specifically is, I don't know which system I'm in. Um, that's going to be a tough one. Anyway, but you can go to your bases. These are all the bases that I have. I have a water base. I have a crash ship B where I can go pick up a crash ship that respawns all over all the time. Dead planet. This one had two different ships that I got on it. Uh, this is a portal base. Um, every system, every single system has a portal somewhere on one of the planets. Um, there are ways to find them. There's videos out there explaining that all day long. Um, this is my home base right here. Um, I have a moon base, which is just a resource farm. There was a massive amount of dihydrogen, which um, a lot of the stuff that you do, you're going to need dihydrogen. You're going to need it for 
just um, just a ton of stuff. Especially once you have a freighter, you have to make a ton of fuel. The more freighter or frigates you have on your freighter, the more fuel you're going to need. And they call them tomes, and you have to make a ton of it. So, uh, but this is actually the one we're going to go through. This is storm crystals, um, and that also has activated cadmium. That's <laughs> that's the way I named it. It's not a difficult one, but I actually put a teleporter. I, I made a base on the planet, put a teleporter there with a uh, with a battery and a solar cell, so that I'd be able to teleport in and out if I so desired. Um, so let's get here. Quick, quick, quick. It's not top of the morning coffee, but it'll do. Okay, so as you can see, Extreme Hazard Planet. Uh, cool thing when you teleport, your ship always follows you. Uh, this is my base module, this is my teleporter, this is my battery, this is my solar panel for generating. Now, this is what you need to know. Anyone can do this. This is not difficult. It is not, it is dangerous, but it is not difficult as long as you are well prepared. If you look in my inventory, my inventory, you will see that I have 8,000 sodium. That's a lot of sodium. But what that's going to be used for is this is an extremely dangerous planet. So, here's sodium. So, on this planet, uh, any planet that when you're when you're in space and you scan the planet with C, you can actually, you know what, let me, uh, I'm going to show you. You can find these, you can find these things all over the place. Let's get out into space. I want to show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. All right. So we're going to turn around. We're going to look at the planet. There you go. So you see where it says activated cadmium. That's obviously activated cadmium is a great thing, but this is a little bit later on. You can't even get to a lot of planets um, until you have a warp drive and all this other stuff. But if you can find a planet that has anything that starts with activated, it means it's going to have, basically it's going to have electric storms all the time um so electric storms are going to come and go but during the electric storms during the electric storms um you're going to see these tall crystal formations that look like rocks like like uh, crystal shaped rocks with cracks in them and they're going to start glowing well those are called storm crystals and you can only harvest them when they are glowing so i'm going to show you exactly how we do it Perfect landing. Thank you. All right. So this planet's pretty nasty on you know, probably the best of days. Uh, also understand that every time you get out of your starship, i.e. this, every time you get out, it's going to automatically, it's going to do an autosave. That autosave is a hard save. It is not a, it is not a, uh, it's not, it's not an actual save from a save point. But you can most definitely reload to it. There, there are options for how to reload. All right, speak of the devil. These are what will become... These are storm crystals, but as you can see, I can't scan them. I can't shoot them. I mean, nothing happens. They just they just are. It's kind of like these massive flora and fauna that are on every planet. You can't do anything with them. They're just really cool to look at, and they're massive for the entire planet. It probably would have been easier if I found a planet without all of it because sometimes you'll fly right into one because when the storm starts a brewing, it starts to get very interesting. So, we are going to what? Really? I'm just I'm doing a YouTube video, and you just want to walk into the screen like you own the place. I, have I scanned you? I have. I'm gonna shoot you now. That was very rude. Very rude. Very rude. Thank you. Okay. So, I don't want meaty chunks either. Okay, that's what we're waiting for right there. Incoming storm, weather warning. It is about to get extremely difficult to see. And you're also going to see, on the bottom left-hand corner, you're going to have your health bar, which is white. And then you're also going to have your extreme element protection. Um, your uh, uh, exoskeleton protection which is going to be an orange. And that bar is going to drop rapidly. And I do mean rapidly. And here it comes. So you're going to see, there we go right there, extreme storm. I'm going to go ahead and get my life up all the way. But the extreme storm, that's where your sodium comes in. It's going to be what you're going to use 
There's your thermal protection. You can see how fast it drops. So you have to stay on it. But as uh, speak of the devil. So we're going to harvest these storm crystals just like that. Ooh, there's a third one I didn't see. All right. So now we're going to run. And the cool part is, is it makes it so dark that you can see more storm crystals. There's some over here. There's some here. There's some over here. There's some here. There's some. There's some. There's some. So that's kind of helpful that you can see it, but you're going to be uh, refilling. You're going to be refilling that that uh, protection bar a lot, and you have to. Otherwise, it's just going to kill you. Um, I'm not sure on creative mode specifically what you can get away with on this, but I'm going to harvest these for just uh, just just for this one storm, and I want to see. I want to show you guys what you can get. Um, some of these clusters, I've seen some of these clusters. There's been six or seven in a cluster. I'm going to stop here. There we go. Recharge our hazard protection. All right. And right there. And there is a large leaf. And I am now through the leaf. So, uh, but you'll see some of these. Uh, also, I will say this. I didn't know this until the first time I did this, but... If you look at my jetpack, it has a massive amount of life during the storm. Only during the storm. As soon as the storm subsides, there's nothing special about it. Um, however, this planet is full of... Uh, oh, see, speak of the devil. This planet is pretty full of um, deuterium plants. Um, I'm not sure all of them are. I'm not sure if that's just a coincidence on this one planet. There's another one. Let's go get it. Uh, I'm not sure if that's something that is um, typical or if that's just something for this planet that I'm dealing with. But there's a lot of deuterium, so even when it's not nighttime, I've also found uh, floating crystals on this planet, which is nice. I'm going to run out of protection before I actually land, but that's okay. I'm going to drop. There we go. And there we go. All right. The good part is your game is kind of intuitive. So when you're trying to recharge something, that's, it goes for the lowest thing first. I found some damaging floor and fauna. What in the world? Oh. You. You won't hurt me again. You won't hurt anyone again. <laughs> All right. I had a moment. Of course, I found all. So anyway, uh, as you're on this planet, you're gonna find all kinds of these little clusters. There's some more right there. Oh, I gotta drop. All right, and these storms are gonna come. Uh, they're gonna drop as quick as they do. And the way you're gonna know that it's gonna drop, actually, these uh, all of these crystals will drop first. They'll all go back to the way that they were when we first started before. Uh... Also, be careful. There are sentinels about, and they will randomly try to start shooting you, depending on their activity level. But for the most part, I think I showed you pretty much what we're looking for. As soon as the storm clears, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how you can check the value of what you just did, and I'm going to show you the best play. Well, hello. Oh, there you go. So that's the first sign. That's the first sign that uh, the storm is clearing up is that the storm crystals are going to vanish. They're going to turn back into the little rock formation. Now you can see my uh, my uh, hazard protection has started going back up. It stopped first. And you're going to see that my hazard protection is just going to fall off. And this will turn back into... Hello, Mr. Sentinel. It'll turn back into just a normal, normal rainy night on the planet. So let's get... I tried to make a circle when I was doing that. I'm not exactly sure. I think I made a little bit more than a circle, but yeah. And you can see I just ran out. <laughs> that was that was my cankles. My cankles just cracked just a wee bit. But uh, you can see I'm parked way over there. But um, there's nothing special about the jetpack when the storm is not going. But man, when that storms are going, you have so much extra jetpack. It is ridiculous, and I am a big fan of it, so. But if we could find some deuterium on the way. 
That's right, I'm a pilot. I could fly. Let's get over here and not die. All right. Yep, I definitely went a little bit farther than I thought, and I just ran out of bat. Yeah, that's my cankles again! Uh, I could have just called my starship to me. Yes, I could have done that. Yes, it would be easy. That you use uh, on PC, you use the X command, and you're just going to hit this, and you can actually... It'll show you where it's going to park. You want to park it there? You want to park it here? Where you want to park it? You can also call uh, an exocraft from another planet. You can call your freighter up into space. Um, and you can call any of your other ships. So if you have other ships, uh, if you own other ships, every ship you have, you can call at some point. So it's kind of nice. Donk. Okay, now it's getting here where it's a little bit quieter. And we're going to look at what we got. So let me move some of this stuff real quick here. You can see uh, we got uh, 17. Let's move this. So out of those 17, this is 645,000. 645, 645, and 258. So these are 18, 19 and a half. Uh, about 22.2 million is what we just got. And that was one storm. So, and I'm going to show you that that's not fake. That's not uh, anything great. I'm going to save real quick. Here we go. Let's get back in. Now we're going to fly up. Now I've done a little bit of research just because this is my planet. This is one that I already currently use. So, um... I'm going to show you that um, I found a planet close by, and I I hope I marked it. Or are you in my way? All right. And we're going to look at the galaxy map. So on the galaxy map, where we're at right now, you can see this is a red planet. Uh, this is a red system. You cannot get into a red system without a cadmium drive. The green systems, which let me show you the... The, the standard systems are yellow, they're light blue, things like that. Uh, but red systems, like this one right here, this one up here, oh, a little too far. But this system here, normally when you first start, can we, can we not? Normally when you first start playing, if you highlight a red system, it'll say, uh, requires cadmium drive. If you highlight a green system, it'll say requires an emerald drive. If you highlight a purple system, it'll say requires indium drive. That is not a standard hyperdrive. A standard hyperdrive will get you to all the yellows. Pretty much yellows and whites, things like that. That's where you're let that's that's the standard stuff that you're looking at. So you can see the one I'm in currently is very, very red. So and you can see that it is let's expand that. Data unavailable. So typically all of these are gonna be about the same. So let's go to this green one here. And you can see that this one is known because it's green, but the red ones are not normally. Um, and let's look at a purple one. You see that is a Gek with Formidable. So what we're going to look for for selling those Storm Crystals is, I know there's a couple of them right here, but we're going to look, if you look right here to the, to right next to where it says research, you see that there's two stars. You want three stars. Um, also where, uh, the line below that where it says research sell 75 by 26, that's not horrible. Uh, we could definitely do better, but that's not horrible. Uh, and it's a balanced economy. You want to try for a wealthy economy. Um, and But you can see specifically, uh, this is 52 and 24, promising. That's at war. Um, this is two stars. Uh, this is two stars. This is one star. This is one star. This is one star. Let's go down one. That's two. That's nothing. Hadn't been done yet. Uh, let's see. We are trying to find. We're trying to find a good one. That's 72 and 18. That's a little bit on the low side. That's two. That's one. Two. One. Three. There you go. Flourishing economy. Buy is 79.6. Or sell is 79.6, buy is 17.3. That is great. So what we're going to do is we're going to click that one, and we're going to go ahead and warp right there. So once again, we're going to do the same thing we did before. As soon as we get to a new system, we're going to jump out in the space station. We're going to try to get our uh, exosuit upgrade so we have more storage. Uh, there, this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. So you see we are now with an attack situation. So we're going to go ahead and take part in this attack situation. 
There we go, took one out. Alright. And we're gonna try to take another one on here. There's one over here. Where are you at? There we go. Alright, now let's try to go over here. Where's this guy at? There we go. No. There we go. Alright, we're gonna use some rockets. Rockets are always nice because they do a really good job locking onto your target. Um, where is this guy at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where are you at? What does it seem like you're inside the ship? Where are you inside the ship? I have no idea where you are. Let's just kick back a little bit and take a look. All right, it says out of range. Let's get a little closer in. Ah, yes, there we are. Well, that is bad fighting on my part. There we go. Let's make you go bye bye. All right, let's see. Where's our last guy? Out of range. Alright, so we're going to get a message now from the lead commander. There we go. He's going to say... The life form, who must be the captain of the crater, looks greatly relieved. They just as if to welcome me aboard their vessel. Alright, now, navigational coordinates have been received. Alright, there we go. And we're actually sitting at this freighter right now, so let's... Oh my. I just missed the entry point perfectly. I will get in. There you go. Quick train. So uh, every every freighter on the inside looks identical. So it kind of comes in handy if you do have or don't have a freighter. Everywhere, it always helps if you uh, go up the stairs correctly. So, uh, but every one of them looks the same, so you're always going to go the same way. You're going to go up, you're going to go in, you're going to go up this ramp. And you're going to go straight ahead, and you want to talk to Admiral Osk. He doesn't sound Scottish. I mean, mine definitely does, but this one doesn't, so. Alright, lights flicker rapidly across the lights visor, and their head nods imperceptibly forwards. They seem to be showing me gratitude. They gesture toward the control panel of the freighter as if to just, I take command. So, right there where it says inspector, uh, it'll say the same thing, so you can request payment, you can decline, or you can inspect the freighter. If you inspect the freighter, right on this screen, it will say whatever it is you want it to say right here. So, you can see this, uh, well, this is a pretty big ship. In fact, this is really big. Um, it's a Class A, so I right now have a Class C. Uh, mine has 26 slots. This is cost 128 million. This has 33 slots. I don't even think I can compare to pay the difference on this one. So yeah, it, the exchange rate for mine, my current freighter is trading price is 24 million. This one's 128. It's a class A. Uh, I only, I, I don't have 104. I have 55. So. You see exactly what I'm saying. You can pay the difference to upgrade your freighter at any time just by finding one of these. And this is a Class A. This is nice. If I was going to pay this cost, I would probably go straight for a Class S. Um, and maybe even a Capital. Like a Class S Capital or something like that. Uh, I would go really good. Um, really, it's just personal preference for you. You're not going to get... there's You don't... You don't get a whole lot of extra except for in the, in, the, in the higher ranges. For instance, this hyperdrive range on mine is 109.9. This is 
Warp efficiency is the same. Storage space, this one holds 26 ships. This one holds 33. So you're going to see they're obviously different. You can actually see they actually have more storage here than I do. But I rarely ever fill any of this up. Everything's always moved to my actual storage uh, vessels that are on there. So I'm going to say decline because I can't afford it anyway. Um, thanks a lot. It's like trying to ask me to trade in my Ford Pinto for a Lamborghini. I don't think it's going to work that way. But... I can just request payment and chromatic metal. You're going to get about 250 or 197. Um, not necessarily worth all the trip to come up here for some chromatic metal. Uh, I will say you can go back here. You can actually go back to the back of their ship. Uh, if you have an Atlas V pass, that'll come in handy right now. If you don't have an Atlas V pass, you can't do this. But I can go right here. This just takes the V1. There you go. And searching it up. And it's just a couple little items that I can get real quick. These areas are the same in every ship. Whether it be yours or whether it be someone else's, you're, it's the exact same. So the layouts are the same. Now the cool part is when it's yours, you can change the layout. You can, like you saw mine at the beginning, I just opened the whole floor plan up and just, I really made it into an open floor plan. It's, you know, it's 2021, everybody, nobody likes, Nobody likes a living and dining room. Everybody likes to have an open floor plan. Just just widen it out. Put a couple beams in. Knock some walls out. You made it. Alright. So, we are going to... Dispel. Oh, by the way, once again, you can look back in here and you can see... Are there any frigates that I want to purchase? Are there any frigates that I want to take? And there's a lot of frigates you can go look at. Pretty much all of these frigates over here... Um, are going to be uh, anything that's got the round, the big round wheel on it. That's a science frigate. Um, I'm going to go look and see real quick, actually, if they got any combat. Because I have one combat frigate, and it ain't great. And what is this one? That's a support frigate. These are... I think... take a look what is this one what is this one, what is this one? <laughs> yeah that's a support frigate again I don't need one I'm more interested in uh... yeah there's another one okay so let's go back and find the space station shall we I might have bumped that guy a little bit don't worry about it I have insurance don't worry about it. Get back in your car. Sir, get back in your car. Sir, I have insurance. Okay. Going to the blue light. Gonna go down the hole. All right, so we're back in. Hey, guys, watch out. There's traffic. It's a two-way street here. So when you get in, um, also you can... Um, if you are inside a space station and you see other ships in the space station, yes, those ships are for sale. I'm going to go this way. Yes, those ships are for sale. Uh, pretty much every ship that you see in a space station is for sale. I will say this. Once you have gone to a space station and you have gotten this 900,000, we're going up. And you have gotten this little upgrade right here. You can never, uh, I'll show you. If you go back to the same station, you can go right back. There's nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing happens here. Nothing! It's a big nada. Zilch, Zippo, ah. Uh -uh. So, uh, a couple of things you can do. For the exosuit, you can actually talk to this guy uh, before you go do um, the, what I was explaining about having to use sodium on a regular basis to fix, to recharge your exosuit protection. You can actually come to any station and you can look at the upgrade modules. They cost nanites and they're not a lot, 100 and something. Uh, but you can actually start at the bottom, go to the A's. Um, so you have some movement, movement, life support, thermal protection. There's a level B thermal protection. So this is one that you could definitely wear and you could definitely equip this for that situation when you have intense heat. Uh, if you went to do the work, um, check a couple of different stations. You might be able to find, um, one that's a higher class. You can go with like a class S thermal protection module. So the, the more stuff that you can get and you can see here on your exosuit, you have all of these different technologies. You can see um, I have hazard protection here, which is, to be honest, it's it's not a lot. I don't really have, um, I have a 
defense upgrades, things like that, but I, I don't really care so much about the upgrades for uh, temperature protection. I haven't really seen. I mean, I have so much. I have so much sodium. Um, it's not really a pain. I don't spend that much time on desolate planets with a lot of heat, and even if I do spend a decent amount doing uh, missions and quests, things like that, I really don't have too much of a problem, so... We're gonna go to this trade terminal. We're gonna look. We are going to sell... Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> we are gonna sell our Storm Crystals. Exactly. I said 2.2 .2 million. 2.187 million. So we're gonna go ahead and dump that. Money in the bank, baby. Um, a lot of this stuff, I, I save some of these. Uh, I get them all the time. I save some of this stuff. I don't know why. You don't need to. Um, but the stuff that I generally keep on me is very specific. Um, you can actually go, here's sodium right here. They have 4,800 sodium in stock at 52 a piece. So if you maxed it out entirely, it's still not going to be a ton. So it, it's just, it's not expensive. It's not expensive. A lot of people do the cobalt. Uh, cobalt is 243 a piece. It's not bad. So a quick way to make money is actually go on virtually any planet that has, um, well, any planet. Uh, you'll find cave systems on virtually every planet. When you go into a cave system, scan the pillars, the stalagmites, stalactites, things like that. You're going to find a lot of that stuff is made out of cobalt and ionized cobalt. Harvest as much as you can. It You don't ever have to worry about sentinels in underground caves. If you if you ticked off a sentinel before you win the underground cave, you'll lose them in the underground cave typically. like they'll, they'll start searching and they just won't be able to actually find you properly. So even if they're right in front of you, they won't see you. But... Um, but yeah, spend a couple of hours and just do nothing but harvesting cobalt and then go to a system and try to sell as much as you can without crashing the market. And you can make a pretty penny. That's the way I started. But then when I found these storm crystals, uh, for my time, storm crystals were so much more worth it. I mean, just absolutely so much more worth it. They just bring you so much more for the cost. Um, I do want to uh, boost up my uranium here. And there is a way to do this. There is a way to do this. Um, I saw someone do this where they were actually able to just scan it over and just input a number. And they didn't have to sit here and hit the arrow and make it go all the way across. It's kind of annoying. Um, I don't know specifically how they did it. I'm sorry. I just don't know. But... I'm doing it the old-fashioned way where you just sit on the button for a while and let it go. I'm going to take all this uranium because it seems like every time I, I go through a black hole, I end up, uh, something on my ship gets damaged and it takes 100 uranium. But I'm also trying to make some things at the moment that are going to require uranium. So, uh, let me see. What can I do on this one? Can I just type in a number? Wouldn't that be great? Uh, nope. Sure tried to, though. Oh, let me see how much copper I have, actually. Cover, cover, cover. Uh, yeah, I could definitely use some cover. Okay, we're going to go back into this. And we're going to sit on the button again, because that's the way I do it. Sorry. I know it's extremely entertaining to just watch me sit here and go, that's a nice button. I'm just going to keep pressing it. So, uh, we're going to be, I'm going to be posting some more videos coming soon. Um, as I find small things, um, a lot of people have beat this game, uh, you know, many times over. This is a half a million dollars worth of, half a million credits worth of copper, and that's just fine. It's what I need, so I'm going to get it. But there's a lot of people who have, who have done so much on this game, and, and you know, they're on their third or fourth playthrough to where they beat the entire game. Uh, more, you know, got to the center of the galaxy, which is the main goal of this mission. You know, you have 16 glyphs that you have to unlock. Um, you have all these different portals that you can access and travel around. And you can actually, there are people who found portals one system away from the center of the galaxy. And they post those online. And you could just run right to it and finish the game. You know, you can do, do the quick way of unlocking portals. And then as soon as you unlock all the portals, you go to that system go one system over and ah i made it to the center game over i win what's the point of that um there's not a whole lot of great stuff that happens when you get to the center so one of the things we're going to be doing next is i'm going to be getting uh i want a living ship i don't have one 
I've seen there's a lot of ways to do it. You can get eggs, you can go and uh, incubate those eggs and you can turn into a living ship, etc., etc. I'm not exactly sure how it goes. Um, I've just been trying to get going on the game and you can see I've made a lot of progress since my last video. So keep checking back in. Keep your feet on the ground. Keep your stick on the ice. And I'll be posting more videos here pretty soon. Enjoy.